Don't judge a book by its cover. Sharon Hornell, from here, our idiom, our expression today for Supersize Your Business is to don't judge a book by its cover. Now, this is actually one of my all-time favorite books. It's a quality book from Duran, Dr. Duran on quality, and it actually came with a cover, a cover sleeve, a book cover. It's called a book cover, and had it come with this or this, which book would you buy? Now, sorry, Dr. Duran, but... I don't know that this picture is much better. I don't even know if he's a doctor, actually. He probably wasn't a, a doctor by the time he died. But if I had just seen this black book at the bookstore, I probably never would have noticed it, much less picked it up. Now, I, of course, went specifically looking for this book because I worked for a lot of years in the field of quality and quality engineering. So, of course, it's one of my favorite books. But my point is, we assume things based on what we see. I just learned a book on body language that I'm only about six pages into now taking care of my granddaughters that 95% of our judgment or our assumptions are done visually what we see accounts for 95% of our, our opinion about something now it's natural for us to all judge things and prejudge things and I'll talk about how we can make sure that we're not letting our prejudgment emphasize or or damage our relationships or our well-being because if we judge people all the time and now this is coming from a reformed judgmental person because uh, prior to my sudden cardiac arrest and back in my early career when I was younger and very immature and arrogant I would say I I judge people a lot more quickly than I do now um, and it's because of lessons I learned by mistakenly judging people or not judging them or underestimating them, which was interesting because in corporate America, I, and even in, in college and in school, I was often underestimated because I'm only a whopping five one, five one and a half, and with heels, maybe five two, five three, and so I'm small, and people tend to underestimate or ignore or not acknowledge people that are smaller, people that are taller are seen as being more expert or uh, more attractive. Anyway, that's a whole topic for another day. So where does this idiom come from? This is one of those idioms that's been around since about the mid 1900s, actually the 1800s. And this is a kind of a controversial one, which I found really interesting when I was researching it. Because when I went to the Google, our friends at the Google, at Google, I, I say the Google a little bit facetiously, but when I went to Google, Google accredited it to um, an African-American journal in 1944. Now, as I dug down a little deeper, I found that it's actually George Eliot. And I know I've researched this idiom and we've talked about it before. Sometime in the 900 or so idioms that I've shared, it's come up. I know it has. I'm sure it was in that first 600 that I covered. Although, I don't have my computer, so I'm not verifying it. But I guarantee I've talked about it before. But George Eliot, quote, from The Mill on the Floss in 1860... And in 1867, he also referred to it in an article, a newspaper article called the Pequod Democrat, maybe. Um, but according to Google, it came from the African American Journal in 1944. Those were the first results that came up. And I guess my caution is don't prejudge and assume when we're doing research on any source that it is 100% accurate, the truth. Or, or anything. We have to think for ourselves and then continue to dig into our homework. Because I knew when I read that, I'm like, that doesn't seem right. I know I've covered this before. And instead of prejudging and, and assuming that the first couple of results on any search engine are, are what we're looking for, it's like anything. It's kind of a buyer beware thing. Understand that everybody and every organization has their own judgment criteria and reasons and intent for presenting things in a certain way. Now, I don't know how the algorithms come up with what they show first, but to me, it seemed a little um, a little inaccurate. But don't judge a book by a cover. It's a, it's a metaphorical phrase that reminds us, in an idiom, of course, that the worth and the value of something isn't necessarily at face value. It isn't necessarily what we initially see and judge. So judging is of course human nature, right? We all judge things. We prejudge often before we even enter a situation or meet a person. We've already got an idea formed in our mind based on anything we've heard about them or any interaction other people might have had or, or past interactions that we've had. 
we have an opinion form before we even get into a situation, start a new job, meet people, go to a new restaurant. We have preconceived notions of what we think things are going to be. Now, the interesting thing about preconceived notions is there are expectations, and our expectations tend to be met most of the time. If we expect things to be negative, we will look for things that cause us to have a negative experience. If we expect things to be positive, we will look for things and we will notice the positives about a situation. Guess what? Those negatives and those positives are always there, but our experience of any situation is what we choose to see, what we choose to experience. So what are some ways to, given that judgment is 100% human nature, we all do it no matter, no matter how we try to say we don't, every single person on the planet is is judge we judge things why because our subconscious we do it on a subconscious level because our subconscious is wired to keep us safe in any situation so as soon as we find ourselves in a new situation a new place it's meeting new people or with new people we size them up as quickly as possible and we don't do it consciously some of our you know some of our observations are conscious we look at people's whatever you notice in people some people look at people's eyes other people look at people's height or weight or uh, the way they dress, the way they move, it's, it's, we're all different, but we're examining and comparing people and summing them up and deciding if they're safe for us or not in the first couple of seconds of meeting them. Now, how do you make sure that you are less judgmental? How do we be less judgmental so we make sure we're creating the relationships we want, increasing our probability of having great relationships, making the right decisions, and um, increasing our emotional well-being? Because guess what? If you're Prejudging everybody based on a, a certain filter that you've created, because we all create our own filters, you are you're missing out on a lot, and you're probably um, misjudging people. Now we can judge people too harshly, but we can also give people the halo effect, and that just means we expect them to be, we're, or we assume that they're angels based on whatever. So maybe you have a Greek god complex, I call it, and any good-looking man is automatically a good person. I don't know about you, but I've dated some good looking men that definitely don't deserve a halo. And I suspect that you've probably had some of those interpersonal relationships as well. So we don't want to judge either too positively or too negatively, but we also want to be a little bit realistic and, and keep ourselves safe. So what are some of the ways we can do that? We can practice, well, number one, we can realize that we all automatically judge people, you know, and it, it's not based on color of their skin, and maybe it is for some people, but not the vast majority of the people I know. It's not based on age, although there are some people I'm sure that are prejudiced against people that are too young or people that are too old. Got a lot of that in corporate America too, because most of the time I was too young, I was a woman, I was too short, I was whatever that people would prejudge. So that happens to all of us. And the reverse of that is we all do that. So we just want to be a little self-aware and know that that we're doing it all the time and try to be a, curious about people. I think one of the things that has helped me the most in my life and my career is I'm just curious about stuff. I want to know how stuff works, how things work. I always have. Even as a little girl, I was always taking things apart, much to my mother's dismay, and leaving them dismantled about the house because I want to see what they look like on the inside. I wanted to see literally clocks, what made them tick. I was always taking apart clocks and, and anything I could get my hands on. Watches, clocks, you know, little boxes, trinkets, music boxes. I don't think I ever had a music box that didn't get taken apart so that I could find out how the inner workings worked in it. So be curious. Be curious about people, who they are and what makes them tick. Also keep in mind that our prejudging of people and our judgment of people is much more about ourselves and keeping ourselves safe than it is about the person that we're judging or the person we're meeting or the situation that we find ourselves in. Because we do the same thing with a new environment, a new job, a new organization, a new idea that we hear about. We judge that just like we do other people. So be curious about people and things and experiences and and ask questions. I love asking questions of people to find out what makes them tick and what makes me tick and why I ask them the questions that I ask them. Uh, prioritize and be more empathetic. Uh, practice empathy. If we seek to understand other people and are asking questions and curious and getting to know them, 
we're, we're less likely to be automatically judging them or comparing them to other people or comparing them to somebody that we had a past experience with or a situation that we had a past experience with that might have been negative. And so we want to practice trying to, to see things from their point of view, trying to understand where they might be coming from. Uh, we want to reframe different situations. Just because we started a new job and it was horrible doesn't mean starting this new job is going to be horrible as well. So we want to make sure that we're framing people, places, situations, and experiences in a positive light versus a negative light. We want to practice mindfulness. When we are present and in the present moment and not our mind isn't off wandering to the list of 10 things we have to do at home or what we forgot to do at work, um, if we are being present and actively engaging with people, we're more likely to make a, an accurate judgment of them than an inaccurate judgment of them. And the final thing that we can do to help us to be less judgmental is to uh, practice self-compassion. Be a little patient with ourselves and say, okay, yeah, I was kind of a jerk to that person because I assumed that they were trying to cut me off in traffic because it, they're just a jerk. But the truth is, and this is kind of an example of reframing too, the truth is I have no idea. They might be late. They might be on their way to the hospital because their child got in an accident. We don't know. So practice reframing, practice self-compassion. Think of how um, we would want people to judge us. And when we do that, I always say treat people the way you want to be treated or you would like to be treated, not um, how they might be treating you. And you'll always have better interaction, interactions, interactions and relationships. That's called combining words together <laughs> than if you didn't. So curious about your experience with judging a book by its cover. I don't know about you, I go into the bookstore and I go to the business section and I pick out the books based on their cover that look interesting to me. Now, usually I have a topic in mind and I will go along those lines, but I still will go with something that I'm attracted to. We all do that. We will continue to do that for the rest of our lives. We'll be attracted to things that we find attractive based on all our past experiences and um, interactions with other people. And you know, unless we choose to be open-minded, which I tell you, if you're trying to grow and supersize your business, we want to be open-minded. We want to go with the flow. We want to make sure we're accurately judging people, doing our due diligence, not just um, taking them on face value. Because a lot of times we make mistakes. Sometimes our intuition's right, but sometimes it is way off. So we want to be careful with that. Share in the comments below your experiences with judging a book by its cover, or if you've been judged for the way you look. I know I definitely have. Uh, and sometimes positively, sometimes negatively. Uh, social media is an exercise in people judging you without looking into any information about you. And it always makes me laugh because uh, well, people will message and say, well, what do you do? What do you do for a living? And I'm like, seriously? There's, there's like 4,000 or 5,000 videos of me online. There's all this other stuff. And if you, you know, just read any of my profiles, you got a pretty good idea of what I do. And if you don't, then ask, say, hey, I looked this up. Are you still doing this or something? But uh, don't be lazy. Don't be um, silly or stupid because people see right through that. All right, that's it. That's my diatribe today on don't judge a book by its cover. Go out, have an absolutely amazing day, and I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how much you use it to grow your business? Maybe even make your life a little better as well. Have a great day.